Good morning or good afternoon and uh, welcome to the Antria community meeting. Today is uh, Tuesday, September 15th. And uh, for today, we don't have uh, any items so far in the agenda. So it will be pretty much open discussion. We will uh, give another minute to other members for other members of the community to join. And then we will get started with today's meeting. Okay, I believe that we can get started. Uh, not a very wide audience for today. So as we said, there is uh, no topic on uh, uh, on the agenda. So if anybody from the attendees would like to propose any topic to discuss, please, uh, uh, please go ahead. All right, so it doesn't seem that we have any topic, so I would like just to spend a couple of minutes providing uh, a quick update on um, the on the status of activities for uh, the uh, TIA release. Um, as you know, you know TIA is uh, the network observability project. Uh, we are in the process of uh, we are in the process of um, introducing a, a new component. Which we are calling, uh, conveniently calling the TIA manager. And uh, the task for this component uh, will be uh, to provide uh, a, an interface for interacting with uh, the network policy recommendation engine, at least for this uh, first release. Then this will be sort of become the, um, let's say, the entry point for controlling all the Andrea. Uh, observability features. In addition to that, um, so so far we only have uh, merged a first PR, which creates sort of the boilerplate uh, for the server. And uh, we are in the process of uh, then adding the adding the APIs that will process uh, the uh, various. Uh, uh, CRs, uh, I mean, and for this, this for this first release, it will pretty much have just a network policy recommendation CR. Uh, we did not present it in uh, this meeting because uh, we still don't have, uh, um, let's say, uh, something that works end to end, uh, which can be, um, which can grant a nice demo. That will be something that we will probably discuss in uh, the next community meeting. Uh, apart from that, for the TR release, uh, you we will have. Uh, uh, a new uh, Grafana homepage that was already presented uh, a couple of meetings ago. And uh, yeah, and that would be pretty much it in terms of uh, important features that will be added in the, in the next tier release. Um, I don't know if uh, anyone from the attendees wants instead to share a little bit of the progress related to the features that are going to be merging on Tria 1.9. If you want, please go ahead.
All right, so there doesn't seem to be much to be updated regarding the release status for for this week. And um, yes, I just wonder if you have uh, anything that you would like to bring up in terms of uh, general discussion, uh, process improvement, or uh, uh, you know, unit test coverage, uh, or any other topic which might be important uh, to discuss with the community. If so, please uh, go ahead. I don't have anything specific to share, but I want to thank Tim for uh, for push, uh, creating so many so many PRs for improving the new test coverage of uh, entire uh, code, and I think we have got almost uh, maybe ten PRs for many packages. Yeah, and thanks for the team. Thanks, team, for the effort. Yeah, thanks. That's uh, that's good news. That's good news that we are getting to a better level of coverage. Cool. And uh, uh, Chia, yes. I also have a question on uh, unit test coverage gating. Uh, I know we added the gate uh, for PR merge, saying the new change should have should reach um, seventy percent coverage rate. Yes. Yeah, I just want to. No, what's the current situation for that gating? Uh, do we make it a monetary already, or they are uh, we are saying uh, for particular cases it can be exception? Uh, it is made uh, mandatory, uh, but uh, uh, we're merging um, uh, some PRs. Uh, it, it is really hard to make it achieve that. So, so while a few of them. Uh, skipped the uh, I, I first uh, I for, first skipped the check uh, because for example if you want to remove some stale code I think that's uh, calculated as a diff but uh, yeah you don't uh, you there's no point to add, add a new test a new test code for that removed code. I think that's a special case. No, for for most PRs, uh, I, I think in the last few weeks when they are merged, they reached the target uh, coverage. Got it. Uh, because I, I did say uh, a few PRs didn't reach 70% uh, uh, coverage. And for most of them, I asked the uh, owner to try to increase the coverage rate. Yeah, but I just wonder, do we have any generic principle uh, about uh, such situation? And should we generally ask um, the yeah. author to try to improve and reach uh, and, and the study, uh, meet the coverage um, target? Or um, in many cases, we can have exceptions. Yeah, I, I think we should uh, encourage authors to improve coverage and. Uh, the only exceptions I know is about uh, uh, typo correction and uh, code remo removal. Yeah, I, that's the only two cases I, I was aware of. Okay, got it. Okay, and uh, thanks for the clarifications. Mm, yep, yeah. so... Yeah, I mean, I just have a question for uh, the for T. I'm thinking that uh, the unit test constraints, coverage constraints, will uh, need to be enforced on uh, Python and Golang because basically, let's say that this, it's uh, the code base it's uh, half and half between Python and Golang at the moment because uh, you know, as you know, for natural policy recommendation, everything is written in Python. I wonder if, uh, I mean, if we have a PR which where we only have a Golang code or only have Python code, it should be easy to enforce a Python job that does uh, uh, that does a uh, unit test coverage either for Python or for Golang. Then uh, uh, I wonder 
if we have uh, uh, any PR which changes both Python and Golan code, whether we need something special to enforce uh, um, a gating criteria on having minimum level of coverage, both for the Python code and the Golan code. I, I don't think it's impossible. I just wonder if you believe there might be some uh, uh, difficult, difficulty in achieving that with code curve. I'm not sure whether the, the tool code cow can combine the two two reports of different language. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't check that. Maybe we, we need to see. Yeah, that's uh, that's the same. I believe that what we need to probably to do is that we need to set, run separately the job jobs for Python and Golang, and then we should have uh, uh, some other uh, some other task that compares that both results are ex are be above a certain threshold. But anyway, yes, it's just a technical thing. We need uh, we need to verify whether it's possible or not. Okay, and um, right. So this also concludes this discussion on uh, unit tests. And um, I have to ask again, if there is uh, any other topic that you would like to bring up. Okay, so waiting a few more seconds to wait if there is uh, anybody from the team with uh, any other topic uh, for discussion for today. I have another question for Chen about their yeah, server policy. Uh, right. So right. that one we're still talking for 1.9 or it's 1.10? It's 1.10. In 1.9, okay. yeah, we only plan to uh, finalize the design and uh, POC. Okay, got that. Uh, 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 and uh, since we're already talking about this uh, i have a question about the license i checked uh, uh the uh, tools like uh, three cut his license this license is gpl version 2 uh, and uh, i checked that um, uh, it is similar to other linux tools like app tables and net, net filters so i assume it is okay to uh, package the upstream uh, built binaries in Antrius uh, deliverables and uh, use the, that tool directly in Antrius. Uh, am I right? Uh, I think we don't plan to do any modification to these tools, uh, right? Yes, uh, with the GPL v2, usually repackaging uh, does not pawn any, does not, uh, there's no uh, lic licensing challenge with uh, repackaging. Uh, it's slightly different uh, in terms of attribution when you do modifications to the original code. But uh, yeah, there should be no problem if it's a, if it's a GPL v2 license, then we are just repackaging the binaries. And even if we, even if we were, since at the end of the day, um, Antria, it's still uh, it's still fully open source. It will not have been a problem. It's just that the overall Antria license uh, would have changed as well, becoming uh, Apache plus GPL v2. But since we are just repackaging the package, uh, there should not be any problem. But in any case, yeah, that's something that I can verify. I, <laughs> I did some uh, licensing stuff in the past, so I remember a little bit of this thing. So I'll, I'll check what are the implications on the, of uh, uh, repackaging GPL v2 components. Because, you know, the difference with IP tables is that uh, it is true that IP tables is GPL v2, but we are not redistributing it. In this case, I believe that we are redistributing Suricata, and that's slightly different from IP tables, from the way we are using IP tables. Uh, I was asking IPTO because we, we also in our in Andreas, uh doc image, we also download IP tables uh, as sync. Ah, yeah, that's uh, that's a good point. That's tantamount to distributing it. Yes, you're right. 
that's a good point. So uh, yeah, I no, don't think that's we are when using many GPL uh, license uh, components, right? Uh, for example, open with switch. Open with switch also GPL with two. Um, I think open with switch mm -hmm. is Apache or oh, really. Uh, let me I verify. Saw it's very easy. <laughs> I saw the GPL. No, no. Uh, open with switch is Apache too. Open with switch is Apache. Oh, really? Too. Yes. Yes. Okay. I, yeah, I but we, I mean, uh, <laughs> even just by building a, a, a Ubuntu based image, apart from my tables, we are implicitly redistributing many mm -hmm. GPL V2 components. So it's uh, I, I don't think it's a problem, but it's a good point that's been raised by Chan. And it's better to verify whether we also need to change some attribution in the entry license because of this. So yeah, that's uh, something worth verifying. Should not be a problem, however. Yeah. I raised the question because I saw that the license we accept we accepted uh, uh, we, we said we, we when we configure the license checking tool uh, GPL V two is not in the list. Uh, but I'm not sure whether it is because we that tool is only used to check the code, not the binary. We we have a tool which whose, whose configuration. Uh, it's written by Antoni. Yeah. I, I mm -hmm. He didn't include the GPL V2. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, you're right. I think that it might also uh, just scan through school modules, yes. Uh, but I know I unfortunately I don't know the details about these tools, so I cannot comment here. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I could uh, mm. use him offline. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, Chan, one more question for me. In terms of uh, uh, discussing and presenting and uh, uh, seeing a demo of uh, layer seven policy, do you think that we can uh, do it like uh, in, in the next meeting in a couple of community meetings? Yeah. Uh, you, you, you mean uh, have a presentation about the design and the POC? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. I mean, discussing it together in this meeting. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. Okay. We have one. Yeah. So, but not, not, I'm not sure whether next community meeting, maybe I, I could try. Yeah. I, I mean, it's also, it's also okay the other one, the one after this one, let's say the, the first one of October, or I mean, whenever you're ready. And uh, this is a, a target for Antria 1.10, you said, right? Yes, yes. Good. Yeah, that would be great. And uh, and uh, uh, just uh, in terms of potential design, are we introducing new custom resources or just modifying the existing custom resources for Antria network policies? I think we may need to introduce a new one because okay. uh, it, it cannot be enforced with uh, uh, why the same uh, priority mechanism because it cannot you you cannot insert or and append uh, rules before and after the seven eight policies it must be uh, like kind of uh, kubernetes narrow policies uh, no priority and no tail yeah just uh, mm -hmm. uh, black list or a uh, white list so understood it cannot be easily combined with internal policies with current uh, priority and uh, tail design understood perfect thanks a lot so we look forward for uh, reviewing the design and uh, look uh, and uh, having a nice team of this feature as soon as possible and uh, is there any other question for Chan or any other topic that you'd like to bring up for today? I'll wait a few more seconds. And uh, therefore, I believe that might be all for today. 
So thanks everyone for joining. I wish everyone a great day, a great afternoon, or good evening or good night. So thanks again for joining and uh, we'll meet again in two weeks time. And uh, if you have anything that you would like to present, anything that you would like to discuss, anything that's bothering you, please let us know in the Antria uh, Slack, channel, Slack channel so that we can uh, uh, schedule uh, your topic in the next agenda. Thanks again for joining and uh, talk to you in two weeks time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.